10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Virtus Pro's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. So it's uh, it's hard to actually guess what Rock's Kiss is doing, and I'm gonna echo your point for the Dark Sir. Like he does have some utility, for example, surging people away from Bane chasing you, uh, vacuum as a pseudo long range way to deal with Bane, but. It's just kind of like awkward. Also, another very awkward interaction with the sleep uh, versus Dazzle Weave is, yeah, sure, you could sleep the enemy team, but if Weave is on you, it's, it's going to keep on ticking, and the minus armor is going to be absolutely insane if you choose to take the fight after you sleep. So most likely Naga sleep, uh, if you don't use it in a Womble combo way, you have to really use it as an escape, uh, escape mechanism. And Ember Spirit gets ticked out very, very late, as Ember Spirit is a hero that both these teams have picked in that best of three that they play against each other. Hmm. Invoker. Can you play some Invoker, right? I play a lot of Invoker. Do you play Exord or Quatswax? I used to play Exord all the time, and then someone taught me, like, well, they buffed the EMP, like, three times in a row or twice in a row. Quatswax is um, pretty, pretty it's ridiculous. Easy. It's easy to play as well. well it's, yeah, easy execution is always something that's important, even level because it kind of it signifies stability right like you're not mm -hmm. going to do poorly in most situations but it looks like it's going to be an invoker versus a shadow fiend mid which is like an age-old matchup and like we haven't seen in quite a while that was back when ta was popular and you used to see like ta invoker mm -hmm. or sf against Quop as well yeah and queen of pain those were like the four top tier mids and people like mushi and dendi and all those players were known for so we're going to get to see one of those and if i had to say I do like Rock's Kiss lineup better. I feel like they can actually function more, and having EMP against a team with Naga and Abaddon is like really sick. Do you if think he's going EMP. Yeah, do you think they'll go Exhort just to get the forward spirit minus armor as well, on top of all the other minus armor? I think EMP functions way better against VP than going Exhort, because you have two, maybe three heroes who more or less go out of mana straight away mm. from just one high level EMP hitting on them, and when you're playing against heroes who probably aren't going to have more than one pair of arcane boots, for a majority of the game and I mainly mean like just Darkseer right like he's gonna get them but maybe you know the Abaddon or the CM can't afford them for quite a while so when you only have one it's very hard to actually fight two is kind of the minimum we saw that yesterday I believe it was actually Alliance who had two pair when they were playing against an yes, EMP and Alliance. Poker. yeah, yeah. Alliance so it's been a long time since people start were picking this hero like a lot, but now since he's coming back into the limelight a bit, I think it's kind of necessary to just become accustomed to that again. They also nerfed the mana boots, didn't they? They get increased the cost to use them. Yeah, so there there is. But it was only ten, right? Like ten increased mana cost. Yeah, but for like Abaddon, who only has like what three hundred mana. Yeah, I actually think there is a good chance where EMP takes yeah. you away from that requisite of whatever exactly, amount yeah. and to, then... to use that EMP. So we'll see. No, it's going to be Exhort Invoker. So oh. it's going to be that quick Forge Spirit. Obviously. There is a small chance that he's getting the first point into Exhort just for the laning, but I, I kind of doubt it. I think most pros nowadays have learned uh, how to last it with Quas and whatnot. So, yeah, it's going to be the quick Forge Spirit, which is going to be a very, very good single target point damage, especially for heroes like Crystal Maiden, who are, is already a very, very frail lady. So we'll see how things go. This is very interesting. I think Crystal Maiden is actually going towards the top lane to drop off a couple wards, and it's going to be an aggressive try. I'm a bit torn about this choice from Solo. So... Shane, I'm going I'm to pose you a question, okay? 
If you're playing 1v1 mid and you're against an SF, seconds. even if the other team is pretty susceptible to Quaswex, do you go Exort just to make sure that you can keep the SF down a little bit more? Or do you go Quaswex and maybe hope that your offlane Marana can try to pressure him? Because as soon as they see this aggressive try line, my first thought is that if you're dodging each other and the Marana is going to be able to farm at least a decent amount, she can potentially rotate. Pretty, like, what would you rather do? I think you have more potential for solo kill with uh, Exort, to be honest, if you can get that cold snap sunstrike thing. Yeah. That's but if you're Quaswex, you need someone else. I think it's it's too hard to do it on your own. So maybe it's that's the idea that they don't have to rotate. So it. you'd rather play it for the laning phase in the early game. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I am I'm actually with the exhort build here as well, especially because there's a trialing versus trialing top. You know your sunstrike's gonna be landing a, a good number of time. And also if you do have the better laning against the Shadow Fiend, who is who else is gonna farm well on VP? I mean Naga, we assume she's not gonna farm too well because of her low base damage and the fact that she is an offensive trial lane. And Darkseer versus Marana. Oh sorry. Completely had a brain fart. Illidan's playing Naga safely. Yeah, it's safe. Uh, Naga yeah, never versus, mind, never um, mind. Na Naga's gonna do well here against Morana, right? Especially with the poor man's show and high base armor. Yeah, he got pulled as well, so yeah. he's got a couple of extra tangos. It's a bit interesting to me, though, that he decided to go for illusions first, doing quite some damage in top lane. We can already see a crush going off there on uh, Chatham, but I don't know how this matchup's gonna go, really. I mean, Morana's base damage is not known for being significant, right? Like 47? No. Yeah. Not the best. So, I think he'll, uh, yeah, I think he'll be fine. But I think Sunstrike still stands and makes a very, very a powerful addition to the top lane, especially when you have Nightmare, Crush, and everything else. I think they're gonna go right here on Dunder. Dunder is gonna, where's the Nightmare? No Nightmare just yet. They're gonna just straight up Crush. Crush is gonna cut. Oh, well, what a shield. There's a shield. Well, that that's gonna mess everything up, but they wanted yeah. to do the Crush Sunstrike combo. I love how you still call them Thunder. That I mean, just, that totally made me smile. Uh, well, is it Z or Thunder? Name, I don't it? know. It's, it's just Thunder to me. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. But yeah, I, I think that the Sunstrike, just seeing the Abaddon shield once, it's like suddenly things seem tough. Yeah, their plan yeah. out the window. <laughs> Does the Abaddon shield get rid of the weave from the Dazzle? I don't think it gets rid of ulties. Well, actually, it gets rid of Poison Nova. I, I know mean, that for sure. I don't think... Yeah, it gets off like Beastmaster Roar, for example. Like, I don't think OT or not OT has anything to do with it. But I for Weave, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it actually removes Weave. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it does? Question mark? I don't think it does. Well, we'll see. One of us is wrong, yeah, us <laughs> so is wrong. we'll find out. I'm sure the chat will be hollering about mm -hmm. it in like two minutes from now when the delay actually catches up. But I'm not really... This dual offlane, it's getting some experience, but I feel to a certain point it might just be better for the Darkseer to just go farm his jungle. Like, he's not really going to get as much as if he just goes to the woods, and the Abaddon doesn't really need anyone to sit up here and help him. He's not going to die, and they can't get in any more aggressive position than they have been, even with two heroes, because it's still very scary. Yeah, I, I mean, the option here for Roxkis right now is they can't kill anybody else in the lane. Obviously, the shield's going to come out, so do you try to go for the Bane, but... Or sorry, you try to go for the Abaddon, but the Abaddon should just stay back uh, and let Thunder take the hate. And Thunder is going to take some hate. He takes uh -oh. a Tukin to the face right now. Worst, no Nightmare just yet. You can see Jonam looking for the shield. They're doing a ton of damage. There, uh, there's a shield. Where's the Nightmare? There's a Nightmare. The shield came out way early. Where's the Slaughter though? Slaughter playing with creeps. I think they, they're not going to kill Thunder, but they do good harass, so that's pretty good. It's actually surprising creeps. that he actually lived there because Jotam wasn't even level two. Yeah. Like all he had was a shield. He didn't even have a miscall. But yeah, Arsar gets away. No big deal. The patience they show is ridiculous, isn't but, it? But yeah, he he has to go back to base now, and I think he should just go to jungle, like you said. I think he might just make that transition, honestly. What would you do, Shane? Would you go do back you leave to that? on up there on his own? The well, here's the thing. C CM's already jungle. Well, what were they what were they doing even with two of them? Like they were sitting up here and they weren't getting really any experience to speak of, and mm -hmm. Darkseer can jungle pretty effectively, even at very low level. Do you think and you can leave Abaddon there, though? He'll be okay. Nah, he's going to TP back. He bought a TP, so I don't think he's actually going to be going to the woods at all. And yeah, yet, C CM's in the jungle, so maybe maybe that's why sh they're letting her to you. The CM doesn't jungle yeah. the whole jungle. Yeah, no, she's roaming, jump. right? Yeah, she jungle up to level 3, and this is the correct way to do it. You don't jungle all the way to, like, 8 or 9 with the Midas, which I see being pups way too much. It's going to be a smoking on the bot lane. They're going to go on Sedoi. Sedoi would leave the Velo. Should be okay. There's even a chance that she kills a CM. Good harass coming out against Illidan. Illidan maybe trying to bait out a leap. He is for sure. Oh, yep, there it is. There you go. CM gonna come in. Frostbite Nova. Illidan dropping low, but the Pro Man Shield keeping him alive. Oh. Arrow dodge and Sedoi. Well, Sunstrike's gonna come in. It's oh, gonna get a kill. Sedoi's still alive. He's gonna trade the right clicks. The creeps are coming in. NS gonna clean things up, but huge win here for Sedoi. Uh, I think Invoker got half the experience, or did Sedoi get all of it? Oh, top lane as well. I think he got 
all of it actually, but yeah, me too. looks like Arsart's trying to go on Goblack right here, doing a little bit of damage, Crutch comes in, and I think Arsart's actually going to end up dropping here, Jotam is one second on his miss coil, but he can't go for the kill now, Yol on retreat, looks like there's going to be a nightmare on a job up to line up another Crush, and yeah, that's just going to be two heroes dead in the top lane, so a double kill for the Slardar, not the greatest uh, engagement by VP, I'm not entirely sure why they decided to go for that, honestly, in a 2v3, especially when you have a Bane, because then the 2v3 essentially becomes a 1v3. You can't bounce the Nightmare effectively as just two heroes. There's mm -hmm. no way to really do that, especially when you're outnumbered already. So I'm not entirely sure how I feel about them pressuring that so hard, but one thing we've kind of been skipping on a little bit, we focused a lot on top, we focused a lot on bottom. This matchup, G is destroying right now. Yes. Like he's 26 and 5, and Solo is, is 14 and well, 8. Well, you played this mid matchup a lot more than I guess I have. Or maybe Shane, you played this matchup more too as well. Who should it favor? I, I, it, I feel like if you go Exert Invoker, you should yeah, dominate. Yeah, you should be winning, right? Especially yeah. with, uh, you know, uh, Cold Snap and whatever else. He hasn't used the babies at all. He's just using, he has Cold Snap and Sunstrike invoked and no babies. Yeah, Forge Spirits are kind of the whole laning presence with yeah. that build. I mean, allegedly, I'm I'm actually not great at using them either, but I know that's what you're supposed to do, because even if you have three points in Exort, they're not really that durable, but you can use them to bully the other person in the lane around. And there really hasn't been a whole lot of pressure on mid. The CM has only gone bottom, and other than that, it's just been sitting in the woods pretty much, so NS presence on the map hasn't been that fantastic as of yet. He did help his team get one kill but at the cost of a safe lane farmer. So I'm just a bit surprised that it's going this heavily in G's favor. Yeah, well, that said, the solo is helping out with things like Sunstrike elsewhere. Oh, so. Goblack going to spot out okay. G. Here comes the Nightmare, and they're going to be Sunstrike. able to pick up the Haste Rune. They're going to line up the Sunstrike right on top of the Nightmare. Shadow Wave is there as well, and G has no chance. He's just uh, okay. super dead. Yep. Very nice kill. Bane, unfortunately, gets the last hit, which uh, I'm sure Invoker really, really wants. He does have the phase boots. And what do you feel about phase boot on a hero like Invoker? I know Dendi really loves things like Arcane sometimes even, uh, or just keeps it a basic, or sometimes even go treads. What's your thought on phase uh, for a non quas Invoker? I don't think... I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I don't think it's good. Because for me, when you get phase, it's because you want the base damage if you're going Quas Wex to make your auto attacks feasible to last hit with, or just, you know, supplement your damage a tiny bit more. Because when you already have high base damage, you typically want to get attack speed. Or if you have high attack speed, you want to get base damage. So just the way it, I guess, maths out, maybe you know more than I do about that. But I just feel as though your auto attack damage is Exort is significant enough to warrant going treads just for the attack speed. Yeah, to be fair, it is one of the cheapest way to get plus four, 24 for damage early game, so maybe that's something that w w that's what he's going for. And he's also very close to level nine, which is the magical level where you get two forge spirit in combination of your plus 24 damage. That could hurt really, really a lot in the early game. So maybe he's going for something like that. But G doing well so far. He is uh, most likely going to go something like treads into BKB. But we did see Danny go blink yesterday, so oh, we'll see. If on a Sadoi, he's going to yeah. leap away, and he's actually going to get nightmared up as well by Goblax. So really nice reaction. No death going to be had, and. This Darkseer, man, he has just traversed the entire map. He's only level 4. He has no home to go to. Yeah, he... I mean, I really would start thinking about just jungling if I were him, because if he's supposed to be the team's mech carrier, our starts ages away, man. It's just so far. Yeah, John M in the top lane takes a little bit of harass. Maybe John M's going to be the uh, mech carrier, although he's not farmed at all either, so... It's not looking too good here for VP. Their lanes no. are not really... Aside from G, but bot lane looks like we're going to see a little bit of rotation. They want to try to do something. There is another leap up on Sadoi. So yeah, th this is one of the situations where VP is stuck between a rock and a hard place because all the lanes that Roxkis have are so hard to gank. The Vanguard on Slider. It's not too hard to gank uh, Exhort, Quas and Vogra, to be fair. Yeah, but it's very easy to react. Like, ganking Dire on this side, when you have these kind of heroes like in TP, like Bane, and you have Marana ulti on top of that, it's very difficult to be able to actually get a kill with the low damage output that they have on their team. Arrow gonna line up on Illidan, Sunstrike to follow Ooh. it up, the song not even able to be channeled. Perfect, perfect uh, chain stun here. Ennis hangs around a little bit too long, I mean, gotta careful. Radiant's he knows that the stuns are down momentarily, attack. so he should be okay. There's a ping going on Invoker on the mid lane, maybe saying, man, we need to gank this guy, because once he does get to level 9, I, I think SF just have to leave the lane at that point. He really cannot deal with 2-4 Spirit. Not only that, but there's actually been more rotation coming out from the side of Rock's Kiss than there has VP, so I feel like the SF is just going to not have a whole heck of a lot of room Radiant's to function. And since is Illidan top. isn't really doing much better, he's 0-2 right now, yep. there's not really a whole lot of 
plan B. I think a lot of what VP wanted to do is try to take mid-game fights because their team in that regard is strong enough to, I think, actually stand against Rock's Kiss. But the laning phase has just gone so poorly for them so far. Yeah. This what? is before the minus armor comes into play as well. This is just the laning phase. Like, if they have an advantage going into the, like, the mid-game, I think they'll just crush. Like. I think a lot of people see the minus armor in a draft and be like, oh yeah, that's what they're going for. But I, I really think minus armor doesn't really kick in until like 25, 30 minutes. It's more of a mid to late game kind of thing. I think right now it's just hero composition. For example, 6-3-3 six, 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 three, three is almost going to be uh, going towards his blink dagger. And once that blink comes out, what, what answer is there for VP? I guess they could song, I guess they have shield. But when you're running away from heroes like Slaughter and uh, Marana, you're, you're not in a good shape. I actually kind of disagree with the minus armor not being good early game because Sardar's level 1 amp is minus 10 armor and that's on demand. I kind of agree with Weave because it takes time sure, okay. for the ability to actually stack it up, but if you just amp somebody, no one really even has 10 armor at this stage in the game. So you're already hitting harder than you would normally against those heroes and physical damage output, no matter what stage of the game, I think is always going to be pretty good. So Completely fair, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen him amp anything yet. Well, yeah, but, I mean, he's safe lane farming, so yeah, he, yeah. Hasn't, he hasn't done much, but I'm just saying, like, once he does start um, deciding to come to fights, which is probably going to be after that blink dagger, like yeah, you had mentioned. 900 gold. Yeah, he's close. This game's going to have to go somewhere soon for uh, Virtus Pro because, I mean, I guess by design their lineup doesn't do anything. Illidan has a Ring of Health, which I'm not sure what oh, that... Oh, going for a dive on G in top lane. There's a minus TP. armor. Yeah, Jotam's there. Everybody runs. You know, when you have heroes like Crystal Maiden and Abaddon, they're not exactly the most mobile counter ganker, so they can't do anything. Thunder might be in a little bit of trouble in the mid lane here. If he gets spotted out, he's dead. I, I think he's kind of aware of that, <laughs> given his positioning. He's just like, I don't want to be anywhere near this. I'm just bot lane here, and Illidan gets arrow by Sadoi, and that's going to be one kill. NS very, very slow. Yolt's going to get the uh, Sun Strike. That's going to land it to the face. NS goes down as well. Just surgical extraction here coming out from Rock's Kiss all over the map, and I think that tier 1 bot is also going to go down quick. I still don't know, by the way, what Naga Siren's going for with that Ring of Hope. Lincoln's, I guess. Is it? That was the old... Um, the very, very old Chinese way of building Naga was like treads Lincolns. It's so horrible. But it's it's not good when you're behind. Yes. Like, you, you can't really afford to... It's the same reason why you typically don't buy Radiance when you're behind, because you have to get another item on top of that for your hero to start Radiance becoming a threat to the down. other team. Yeah. But Radiance structures the other reason, fortified. too, is when you're losing, you don't have as much of the map Radiance to farm. Yes. So if you get an item to farm... Oh, speaking of, gee, going to get the script here. Up Moonlight Shadow, Ice Wall by Solo. Man, the starter just wants to go in. Shot him, just explodes. He's not even level 6 yet. NS is going to be soon to follow. It's going to be a killing spree for him. That's a bad sign. 6 3 yeah. 3, got a double kill without having access to his Bling Dagger. Now he picks it up. And with hero like Slaughter, you could easily pop off the Lincoln on Roshan and take a free Aegis. And I think that's perhaps what they're looking towards to do. Uh, there's no way VP could challenge this. Given the fact that what Darkstar is level 6, I guess Naga steal with a sleep, but Naga's sleep is down, so never mind. Free Aegis here coming out for Rock's Kiss. Minus armor, man. Even Roshan can't stand to this. That's the nice thing about these kind of strategies, too, is when you play them on Dire, as soon as you have one opportunity for Rosh, you know you can get it guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And since the starter has Vanguard, it's really, really easy for them to tank it up. And they already have Yol on the Dazzle as well, so there's going to be heals on top of it. And with an Aegis on 633, it's going to be... Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe the beginning of the end here for VP. Yeah, they're going to have to have some magical team fight where you kind of remove three or four members of Rock's Kiss in, in a flat go, but they just don't have that burst on top lane. NS takes the arrow, a Star Storm, and that's going to be it. Sadoi, maybe going to chase a little bit here. They will have... Yeah, the Slaughter is coming in. Blink. Where's the crush? There's a crush. He's going to use his amp damage first. Sunstrike is going to come in as well. Illidan, very tanky, but not tank enough, and that's going to be yet another kill here. 4-6-3-3. I just like the way that they could chase so far with things like Blink, Leap, yeah. Gigi gets okay. called, and it's not an early not Gigi. Not even surprised. Yeah. 13 minutes, done. I was about to say, like, they have a chance if they get the Naga Sleep into the Shadow Fiend ulti. Yeah, you I know, don't know. I've seen things happen before like that, but... So, Shane, I know we at Lumi and I talked quite a bit that game, but where do you think it all kind of went wrong for them? Um, basically, when they sent them two lads to the top lane, they just they couldn't do anything. Like the two just, lads, I like that word choice. Uh, they were just standing but there. But do you think that maybe going to the jungle for the darkseer would have been a better option? Just well, so he had something, because yeah. the only.